Welcome to FSI Fridays. I'm your co-host joined here with Edwin. Um, so Edwin, tell us what FSI Fridays are all about. Thanks, Joe Hansen, and happy Friday. Um, how many times have we heard from friends and family and customers, I didn't know that Microsoft did that, or wow, that helps us address a big challenge we had. So I know we got together and said, how awesome would it be to share customer successes with others focused specifically on financial services? So um, I know we plan to, you know, throughout these sessions, span capabilities across our major four solution areas. But Joe Hansen, it's all yours if you want to kick it off. Great, thanks Edwin. So we'll spend the first 30 minutes talking about our capabilities within Microsoft Shifts, as well as an important topic um, really around returning to the office. We'll also leave the last 15 minutes to address any burning questions that you may have. So please use the Q&A window and we'll monitor that during the presentation and uh, answer those questions as we get started. So um, I'm really excited to share today's topic. Um, and as we think about today's topic, um, want to kick off with some background, Edwin, and some context? Yeah, sure, for sure. Um, so similar to our session one with Microsoft Bookings, organizations are always looking for ways to streamline their transition back to the office like uh, Bookings did to connect customers to financial service representatives through appointments and virtual meetings. We've also seen at Microsoft uh, where we've created a hybrid work stage approach while connecting with other organizations so that we can share learnings from each other, including perspectives on transitioning from a work from home scenario to a soft opening to uh, being fully open. Um, so let's get started. I'm I'm really excited that we're joined by Marissa Waddell. Uh, Marissa, thanks for being here. Uh, what's your role at Microsoft? Hi, everybody. Uh, good afternoon and good morning. Uh, my name is Marissa Waddell. I am a customer success manager focusing on modern work in the East region. Uh, all my customers are banks in the East region. That's great. And um, as customers are asking about returning to the office, what are you seeing and hearing lately? Sure, many customers are planning return to office strategy, like you said, Edwin. Certainly, everybody is worrying about employees' health and safety. That's their absolute first priority. But at the same time, how can they find a solution that is easy to use and implement? Uh, recently, Teams has played a vital role in enabling many, many customers uh, working remotely and being productive, right? Customer has always asked me, Marissa, I want a tool that can integrate with Teams and manage employee shifts and scheduling spaces fairly easily. We actually have a tool in our Office 365 suite called Shifts, which is a quick and easy solution for our customers. Uh, this is just one scenario, right? There are many other customers have some unique customized requirements. Um, so we'll talk about that later and how we you know, build actually a power app that can meet those re unique requirements. Thanks, Marissa. Um, so speaking of Shifts, um, welcome to FSI Fridays, Kensington. Um, how about giving us a quick introduction and, and letting us know what you're seeing with customers as it relates to this topic? Yeah, so thank you so much for having me. So um, I'm with Teams Engineering and I focus exclusively on our first line worker personas. So in the financial services industry, that would be, you know, your, your bank tellers um, in your retail banking, uh, your customer service reps, um, insurance reps, things like that. People who in general, they don't uh, sit at a desk typing in a computer all day. They're, they're out, they're interacting with your customers. They're getting the, the job done. Um, and uh, in many day cases, they are your essential workforce uh, that is still active and working today. So uh, as we understand, know it, uh, first line workers are kind of the backbone of all of these major industries. And we have a wide variety of solutions uh, within the Microsoft portfolio to help address the needs of these workers, whether that's onboarding or training, task management, um, integrating line of business applications so you can process loans and do different things like that within our story. But we're gonna kind of just double click today on the shifts and the shift uh, scheduling aspects. So um, with that, I'm going to actually take over the screen here and show you a sample of what we're talking about here today. So if I flip over, I'm actually showing you a, an example of a, a first line worker experience, so a, a sample teller experience um, 
from my mobile device. So this is my uh, my Android device that I'm actually screen mirroring here to show you today. And one of the first things you'll see is that I have a very different look and feel to Teams um, than what you probably have uh, as a normal information worker doing your job. Uh, in fact, uh, you'll notice I don't even have the Teams button on the bottom of my, my Teams application. I have chat, shifts, walkie talkie and tasks and walkie talkie and tasks are coming to teams soon to you and we're here to talk about shifts here today so the first thing you'll see is um, i have up on my schedule my next shift coming up uh tomorrow at 5 a.m i we apparently run some pretty uh great banking hours uh here in in my uh, bank branch you'll see that i am a part of the loan officers group and that's my next schedule but i can actually go in here and take a look at all of the shifts that I have coming up. So one of the important things to understand about shifts is that we built it uh, for two very distinct purposes. In places where you do not have an existing workforce management solution today, um, you can actually deploy shifts uh, automatically, kind of cleanly out of the box the way that it is. It's a nice lightweight workforce management solution. But in cases where you have an existing workforce management solution, say a Kronos or a JDA or one of the other leading um, uh, workforce management solutions of the world that you've configured a bunch of different local regulations and things like that inside of, we will actually seamlessly two-way integrate with those applications. But the end user experience here is completely the same. So regardless of whether this is shifts run natively or shifts deferring to your system of record, um, this is the way that it will look to your uh, to your retail banking associates. And so you can come in here, you see all of your shifts uh, coming up. And one of the things that I can see here is I'm acting as a loan officer on Saturday, but then I'm a CSR on, on Sunday and Tuesday. Um, you know what, I know that I cannot work this, uh, this Tuesday shift here. And so I can go into it and I can go and say, you know what, I need to swap this shift with uh, another store associate and so, or another um, banking associate. So I can actually come in here and swap with another uh, CSR and say, you know, this is this is now uh, what we're going to do. I'm going to I'm going to swap this shift um, off. And what will actually happen is Alex will get a push notification on his mobile device saying that I want to swap a shift with him. And at that point, he will accept or decline that swap. And uh, it will then be routed to, and if he accepts that swap, it will be routed to a manager for approval if we're running shifts natively out of the box. If we're integrating with a workforce management solution, it will route to that solution um, for final approval there. Do adhere to all the labor regulations you may have configured within that environment. So Shifts has the ability to do uh, not only display an always up to date view of your calendar and when you next work, it's not pictures on your phone that, that were maybe four days old and, and now all sorts of things have changed, but you also can do um, offer a one way shift uh, as well as go and um, request time off. So if I go and request time off, I can actually come in here and, and say that, you know, I need to take a sick day. And uh, this is again all backed by our API. So if you want to integrate this with your um, HR system, you certainly can. Uh, and as well as everything you see here in the time off types and cover are, are completely customizable to mimic whatever it is that you use in your environment. So I can request that time off and it will work just like I showed you before uh, with the ability to do all those um, to, to request that time off and, and uh, it will route to managers for approval or route to your workforce management solution for approval. Uh, one of the more unique things that we've built inside of Shifts is not just the ability to see your schedule um, and, and, and request time off, but also open shifts. This is the idea where everyone has a, um, a, a series of shifts they're supposed to work, but we know we need excess capacity on say this Monday coming up. Um, I know that, that there is um, some, we need to be able to cover that. And so I can actually go and request that time. Um, it will then route to the manager for approval to say that, I, that I, I'm okay to take those, uh, those extra hours, or it will route to the workforce management solution to do that. And so, uh, and it's actually this feature in and of itself that we built for first line workers and this idea of an open shift um, capacity uh, management solution that, that's allowing us to, to really transfer what we've built today into a more um, a more kind of generic information worker return to work scenario. So while Shifts is a, a beautiful tool for your retail banking associates, we're actually seeing right now a, a, a large uptick in, in usage and interest to use Shifts to manage a return to work. And it's as, as simple as 
as this. Um, instead of saying um, these, so these different shift groups we have, branch managers, tellers, customer service reps, things like that, I can actually come in here instead and say, uh, you know, maybe instead of being titles of different roles, this could be floor one of the, the major office building. This could be, or this could be the marketing group um, coming back to work. And then using these concepts of open shifts, I'm actually able to go add an open shift and I can say that this open shift is from eight until five. And say that I want to have 25 slots because somebody from HR has walked to this floor and says that, you know, on floor one, we're going to have 25 people work here today. And with that, I can actually save that off. And now I have 25 slots that we can go and uh, and people can go and request those slots. And as they there as those shifts basically get assigned to go in and to work in that, on that day on that floor, um, you know, it will deprecate from the from the total amount that of that are available. And now everyone knows uh, who's in the office when and um, what what slots are available if they if they do want to go into the office to work. So it's it's been a um, it's been a, a really easy turnkey included with teams already um, experience that you can basically deploy overnight um, for for these workers uh, returning to work in, on these sites. Thanks, Kenton. I mean, this is this is fantastic. I know you know plenty of different customers that uh, have used Excel spreadsheets to you know sticking a a page on a corkboard to kind of manage the shifts. Um, you know, this built-in capability, and you know, it looks like this is all directly inside of Teams. It um, is. And you're, yeah, and, and you're you're also showing it. You know, you showed it on mobile first, but then you're also showing it in the in the browser here. And so this is available. Uh, I'm assuming cross-platform as well. So PC, Mac, it doesn't really matter what platform. It, if it runs Teams, Shifts is available. Fantastic. And so you, you touched on this a little bit uh, earlier, but you know, with our FSI customers, um, we see a lot of them have, you know, um, Kronos or JDA to kind of schedule their tellers. Mm -hmm. Could you just spend a little bit of time just, you know, telling us how that all works? Yeah, we design shifts from the very beginning um, to understanding that lots of our major enterprise customers have made these existing investments in these third party tools. And so we weren't looking to replace those tools. We were looking to, to complement them, to seamlessly two way integrate with them, to provide a holistic single pane of glass employee experience. So while we are um, providing, while we were, were talking today about just shifts, you know, there's, there's employee training and onboarding, there is uh, corporate communication scenarios and all sorts of different action, interactions that you may want to bring to this uh, this retail banking associates experience and and shifts just complements that it, it rounds out that full story and and tells that single pane of glass um, experience and, and first class um, uh, retail banking associate experience no, this is this is fantastic Kellington thank you for your time and for this very insightful de uh, demo I mean we can see a lot of different you know you touched on all the different scenarios that this can be used for uh, just a reminder that you know for our audience the Q and A is open so if you have any questions um, feel free to drop them in here and we'll be sure to address them uh, towards the end of today's session um, yeah. so thank you. Yeah, totally agree, Johansson. Um, that was super helpful, Kensington. Uh, and, and Marissa, I mean, Shifts looks great and seems to cover a huge percentage of what's required for frontline workers, especially. Um, what have you heard from other customers' requirements going back to work um, in addition to the frontline workers scenario? Yeah, I hear additional uh, feedback on how facility right now is restructuring building layouts, um, seating arrangements to comply with social distancing for sure. I get questions a lot around how managers can actually track employees on site presence. What about employee can have the flexibility to book one day or multiple days of on-site access. You know, then you talk, think about security, right? How do they grant building access remotely? How do they monitor who's in the building and when? So these are all legitimate requirements. They're not just unique for S FSI customers though. These are the questions coming from FSI, manufacturing, healthcare, education. So that is why our worldwide team built a customized application in our power platform to meet all the customer requirements so our customers don't have to worry about it right they don't have to go in and design and implement um, this complicated solution we build a simple solution for them to implement and so they can really just focus on getting their business on track 
No, that's a really good point, Marissa, especially around you know security and all these different considerations uh, that need to be taken, especially in, in the scenario for going back to work. And speaking mm -hmm. of, we are joined by Pawan. Um, before I move over to Pawan, I also want to remind people that uh, you know there is a Q and A window where you can start asking questions. We're starting to get flooded with a, uh, with some good, really good questions, so please uh, keep them coming. Um, in the meantime, though, Pawan, uh, welcome to FSI Fridays, and thanks for jumping in on short notice. I know this is a hot topic, and it's really keeping you busy these days. Uh, can you share your current role at Microsoft and what we're doing to help customers manage their plans for return to office, and specifically, what's the business need and why did we build this? And Pawan, I think you're on mute. It helps to get off of mute before you start talking. So thank you, Edwin, for pointing that. Um, hey, um, thank you for having me on the call today. Uh, I want to start by saying perhaps in a quick intro, uh, part of the global technical CSM team, we are a worldwide group as part of our customer success org and primarily focused on looking at opportunities, uh, solutions that we can build around teams and platform. And so when you look at the scenario around us uh, where people are trying to do more with less, right? You know, we are all overworked, working remotely, working at odd hours, trying to figure out how to get back to normalcy. Um, and as uh, as we said earlier, right? Companies, organizations are beginning to look at ways to bring people back into offices, perhaps ramping up the on-site access a little bit. Uh, we started to look at ways to see what we could do, bringing the teams and the platforms together, coming up with a solution that will assist them with that. And so essentially the solution was based out of that specific need. Hey, we want to bring people back into offices over time, gradually increasing that occupancy threshold, making sure they were safe, making sure we were managing the capacity or the occupancy within an organization, making sure we knew who was on site at any point in time. So we were able to track, report, audit on that kind of stuff. And essentially giving a way for employees to figure out what buildings were open for them to work on site of. How do I know what buildings I can walk into where the capacity hasn't been filled yet? How does my manager know where I'm going to be if I'm reserving some space online? So to answer all of those questions, we tried to come up with a solution um, that we could build in using our low code, no code platform. Um, so I ended up actually building a solution that uses three different apps and I'll, I will probably say the key app is the building access app, which is used by our employees, managers, workers to request access. And I saw some Q&A um, as I was getting uh, off mute around, hey, does this solution help you reserve spaces in buildings? And this specific solution does help you reserve space in building. Um, it um, not only helps employees and managers request the space, Optionally, you can have managers approve that request. Facilities teams can actually manage that building schedule, and I know we'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, but let me let me actually step back. Whatever we built in this solution space is being rolled out as an open source solution for you. So this is not something that you need to uh, you need to go ahead and purchase from someplace. You can go to GitHub today, um, download this solution. The full solution, the source, everything's available for you. Detailed deployment guidance is available for you. Most customers I work with have been able to deploy this solution in under an hour. And so you can clearly go ahead and follow the instructions, work with the account teams if you have any uh, questions around that. But you know, feel free to extend, rebrand, and enhance, adapt the solution to meet your business needs. Yeah. Um, that's probably where I would see the context for the solution. No, I, I think that's great, Pawan. You, you mentioned a couple of things. One is that phased approach, which you know I think being able to integrate this type of solution and then seeing how it um, how how it rolls across, uh, you know, over time is super important. Uh, one of the things too that you mentioned is you know this this open source demo, which we're going to share towards the end of uh, the the presentation. So um, you know everyone will be able to have access to that short. Um, I think there are different scenarios, uh, Pawan, that you know, and use cases that we must account for. How does this solution address those employees with different responsibilities? Yeah, and a great question here. Um, well, look, everyone's trying to figure out a way to bring our workers back into the facilities safely. 
um, right? When you start with executives and facilities management teams that are restructuring office layouts, taking care of social distancing norms, perhaps redoing their spaces within a building, um, right? They they're trying to figure out what buildings are ready for on-site access after perhaps they've gone through their sanitization schedules, making sure any um, equipment, any uh, facilities that they need to take care of, uh, the supplies they need to bring in, hand sanitizers, masks, and so on have been done. So as they ready these facilities, uh, they need a way to let the employees know um, what facilities are available and given the restructuring, how many people can that building or that floor or that open space accommodate? Um, obviously, as you go along, they need a way to plan this out further. Uh, what demand are you seeing? What is the current level of occupancy threshold for a building? Um, obviously, employees and managers have a big role to play. They need the requested access, be on site. And then for the security teams, again, a key important part of this whole equation is your security managers, officers, lobby managers. They need to know how many people are walking in into the building on any given day so they can plan that around it. We don't want overcrowding happening in lobbies or outside the building. So taking care of that uh, is going to be key as well. Yeah, I, the power, I, I think it's terrific that there's considerations taken uh, for withdrawing requests as plans definitely change and it's important to account for some flexibility. I mean, all mm -hmm. of us had to drastically pivot for the last few months for sure, um, but enough talking the talk. I, I'd love to see this in action. Is this uh, something you could show us a demo for yes. or with? Let's Thanks. definitely do that. Let's go ahead and let me know when you see my screen. All right, so um, can you tell me what screen you're seeing right now? As soon as I hit, you should be seeing the building access. You got app. it. You're right. on. Thank All you. right, so so briefly, um, and this is what um, you know, our previous presenter Kensington shared as well. The app itself is pinned on the left app bar in Teams. So we're not asking people to go find a bookmark another place, go find another place to go launch an app. While they're working in Teams, doing their chat, collab meetings, they can actually go ahead and click on the building access. I'll show you a quick mobile view as well, just to show you that the experience is, is equivalent, whether you're on mobile devices, whether you're on your desktops. But here is my view. Right, so me as an employee walk, waking up um, today um, and again, uh, this is telling me, hey, you've got a reservation today in 1241. Obviously, I've made that reservation earlier and I'll show you how to do that, but this is how my day would start. So I can go ahead and click on that request and it tells me where my uh, request is, what building actually I requested to work out of. I'm going to be on floor one. Um, these are some inf uh, instructions that have been configured by the facilities management team. So telling me exactly what the on-site access instructions would be. And again, in this case, I put some dummy content. Uh, before we move on, let me just assume that, hey, I walked into this building. I'm ready to start working. I'm going to voluntary check in. And so I'm going to go ahead and hit this check-in option. And basically, at that point, it's going to go ahead and record that. Um, I so, so obviously, you can audit it, track it, report it. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, this is the mechanism for people to clock in and clock out. Um, also gives you the ability to, as I said, report on on-site people. One quick thing to mention here before I get off of the screen, we've got a concept of two different types of buildings. The building I walked in, the Tower 41, has been configured as what I would say unmonitored building or an unrestricted access building. In other ways, there is nobody actively looking at my approval to see, am I supposed to be on site? I am voluntarily checking myself in, having acquired or taken the right set of approvals. Um, there is a second set of building configuration you can do, which is what we call uh, monitored buildings or restricted access buildings. And in that scenario, when you walk in into the building, you don't have the option of checking and check out yourself. A security officer, a lobby manager, all of the teams that are ensuring that you know somebody who's be going to be on site has the right approvals, they will use a companion security app to validate if you have the right approvals and check you in. But before I go there, let's complete this scenario. 
So this is me. Let's just say that I'm working on site or perhaps in this case I didn't have a reservation. I come in and I'm going to go ahead and quickly look up uh, start a new reservation. It shows me some of my recent building selections and I, as you saw, I do have a reservation for uh, Tower 41, but perhaps I want to go to the Market Street office and I see the Market Street office is available. You'll see that it's actually a monitored building. I'm going to go over there. Um, you know, and, and maybe there is a team meeting that's happening, so I need to provide a business reason. Again, these are all things you configure since this is a low code, no code power platform. You can configure all of this. Um, as you can see, the system actually tells me, hey, I already have a reservation for June 26, which is today. I know that's to be true. Let me go ahead and pick something out in the future. Perhaps I want to be in office in a week or so from now. Um, I picked up the, the date and it tells me all the areas and I'll call them zones. Now, could you define them as specific cubes? Absolutely. I mean, again, for organizations that have 100 spaces in a specific floor, could you create each space and call availability here as one? We could do that. What we are seeing though, most uh, customers do is say, hey, in this floor, we've created this area. This is open space one, or even just say floor one and floor two. We have 100 seats in floor one and 100 seats in floor two, and essentially open it up that way. It's entirely up to you on how you configure that. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and pick one and maybe I do need to go back in office for a couple of days. So I'm going to go ahead and put two requests in there. Let's go ahead and submit those requests. So I see that the request summary seems good. I'm going to go ahead and submit that request. One nuance um, as you configure your buildings, and you define if the request is going to go auto approved or pending uh, or, or manual or slash manager approved. And in this case, you can see that I've submitted my request, but they're pending approvals by my manager. Um, so that's kind of the core workflow for the user walking in. Um, hey, hey actually, Cohen. Um, yes. So, you know, I think this is absolutely amazing to, to bring people back into the office. And um, so when you think about it from a facility manager perspective, is there a way that they can visually see all of this information? Uh, yes, they can. And so let me actually do one thing. Let me go ahead and bring up because what I expect is if it's a secure one, well, there are two things that are happening. One is the facilities management teams that are looking for what buildings they are configuring. And then there is the whole overview of the security teams looking at a quick picture for that building they are in, and then the facilities management team looking overall kind of all that information that uh, we are capturing. So let's start at perhaps the, the, the facilities management teams. Um, the facilities management teams have a dashboard. Um, they can actually bring up this Power BI dashboard and look across all of the requests that are coming in. And again, if I refresh this, it will tell me the, the new request that I submitted as well. But it tells me today's snapshot, um, how many requests are in, how many are already approved, what buildings these requests are coming from, breakup of those. I can even plot them on on my map and I can see that this one is my downtown San Francisco location. I'm going to go ahead and drill down from here and look at specific requests and details for that building. So facilities management teams can actually take a look at what's happening today in my environment, whether it's across a set of buildings, whether it's specific to a building, and then they can also project out. So we've got additional reports in here like the building 360 breakdown where they can go and start look at how many requests are there for next week, the week after, what's projected occupancy. Uh, mm -hmm. There is a ton of information they can use here for planning. This is uh, you know, really insightful for a facility manager. I know it looks like we're capturing lots of information on who's coming on site. Um, so does this mean that we have a way of doing a contract tracing reports, like who was on site at a point of time, who was in the building with them? Um, we do. In fact, one of the reports here, if you're uh, looking at the screen, the contract tracker report tells me um, a way to do that. And so uh, what I can do, and again in my demo tenant, unfortunately I played perhaps the role of Megan, Pavan, um, and an additional uh, couple of roles. But for the duration I'm looking at, these two people had made some reservations. What I can do is I can pick in the right date. So let's say I want to say, hey, I know that Pavan, for instance, 
um, was in the building last Monday. So I'm going to pick uh, the right dates from here so I can use the sliders or I can use the calendar controls. I can go ahead and pick the individual. In this case, I'll say Pawan. I'll go ahead and, and pick up the buildings they were in. And um, once I do that, it tells me all of the details for that building and all the people that were in that building, you know, on site, checked in, working in that building for that duration that you picked. Um, really easy way for you to figure out, hey, if Pawan was in building at that time and we need to figure out if there was an incident, um, who else was in the building so we can notify them. Very easy for you to do that for using the contact tracker report. That's that's very powerful. So, you know, one of the things with uh, our, our FSI customers is, and as people become, you know, coming back into the work, we're going to see thousands of people coming into the office. Um, and you mentioned approvals for managers. How are we going to manage these approvals at, you know, at such a scale? All right. So let's actually head back over to the manager's piece. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put my hat as a manager um, and then this application in my demo environment. Fortunately, I am my own manager. I wish that was the case in real life as well. But um, what happens here is you saw me put in a couple of requests for uh, a week or so out. And so those hit me. I do have somebody else in the environment, Megan, who actually submitted a request earlier today to be in Market Street office. And the way that works is we've got this approval screen laid out so you can approve it one of many ways. I can either go and drill into this and I can look at the information over here, understand the business reason for which she wants to be in. OK, that looks good. Uh, I'll come back to this one um, because obviously I want to approve my request first. Um, and, and again, I can do it a few ways. I can actually go ahead and select a bunch of them, select all of them, do a bulk approval. I can hit approve one at a time, um, but um, actually let me go ahead and do one here. And what we'll do is I'll show you another way to do it. Remember, we are in teams and the intent is for us to make this more productive. Yes, managers are already overworked. I mean, managers, all employees seem like we are overworked. We are working insane hours, um, but at the same time, we don't want to create a, a way for them to go find an app, find approvals in there or generate additional email traffic for them. If let's just say they're working within teams. Uh, what we've done is we've actually pushed the information to them right within teams. And so in this case, you'll see that there are adaptive cards being generated um, for the information coming in. So for instance, Megan over here, when she requested that, it gave me a card and I can go ahead and hit approve right from here without even stepping out of my chat or collab environment. Um, but in this case, let me see something else is going on. I see that she said she's going to be in office for a team meeting. Um, oh, by the way, I'm going to go ahead and start um, a one on one chat with her. And I was doing this demo earlier with someone. I said, hey, Megan, the meeting's actually on 7 2 now. So perhaps I could go back and reject the request or have her withdraw the request and go back and resubmit it. But very easy for us to you know, leverage the power of the platform here, the chat pieces here to go back and quickly uh, check in with them. Perhaps plans have changed. Perhaps you know something else may need to be done or go ahead and hit approve right from here. And once that's done, I come back over here and it tells me, hey, the, the building approval or the request approval is complete. Well, it, Pavan, I, you know, we can't thank you enough. This is, you know, something that is very top of mind for our customers. I mean, you showed a lot of great capabilities here um, and, you know, customers want to probably understand how they can get started with this. So could you just share with us just a little bit of, you know, some of the next steps um, that customers need to, you know, maybe get access to this open source solution and, and how they could potentially deploy this? Sure, um, and so as I said earlier, the source today is available for everyone to download and deploy. It's on GitHub. The short URL is listed on the screen, aka.ms building access app. Um, what you will find over there is a way to download the full solution. So it gives you access to the three apps and we didn't get uh, a chance to show you the security companion app, but we've looked at the manager. Uh, we've looked at the employee and the manager piece. Uh, there are and again as I'm talking, I'll go ahead and flip over. There is the whole building admin piece uh, where you configure the whole environment and then there is the security piece and you obviously you can run all of these on your mobile devices, but the 
intent is for us to be able to help you deploy all of these pieces. Um, you can go ahead and do that from the, the link provided. Um, the detailed deployment guidance, it's fairly well documented. Please follow that. And if you have any concerns, issues, questions, feel free to work with your account teams on that. And as I said earlier, this is power, built on Power Platform. So feel free to brand it, feel free to extend it, adapt it, and make it your own, make it fit into your processes. Thank you very much, Pal, and this is you know remarkable, and we look forward to to helping our partners um, and customers uh, deploy this in their organizations and and get back to work. Um, so thank you, everyone. You know we're going to open it up, and we've got some you know a bunch of questions in the Q and A that we you know, love to to bring to our speakers here. Um, so we'll open with the questions here, and um, uh, let's get started with that. So one of the first questions here, this is actually for Kensington. Um, we had a question here. That asked, you know, does where does Shift store the data? Is this in SharePoint? Is this, you know, somewhere else? Could you just share a little details on that? Yeah, so we've published some documentation uh, that we can provide to you uh, to link. But it, it, in general, our, our Shift's data is stored in the Azure it, in Azure in our data centers in North America, Western Euro Europe, and Asia Pacific, uh, depending on the location of your tenant. So um, basically. When you create your tenant in the first place, that kind of helps dictate which data center um, within our Azure environment that's managed by Microsoft um, this data is stored in. Yep. Great. Hey, um, I also noticed uh, Paul asked, when is this being recorded? Will be, will you have access to it after? Um, that link in the middle, AKMS slash FSI Fridays recap, will lead you to our YouTube channel. Uh, we have our previous recordings there as well. And then there's another question by Paul, um, and this is for Kensington. Is this a potential use case for shifts to manage uh, cubicle hoteling on a floor building, et cetera? Yes, and, and you'll see that, you know, uh, Paul on Solution does that as well. So you, re you really have a, a dealer's choice, so to speak, of, of solutions here to help you with your needs. What's nice about Shifts is that it, it is out of the box. It isn't a, a custom app that you have to go uh, sideload or implement, and, it, and it's really flexible to meet your needs. Um, we not only can you change the, the name of those Shift groups to be whatever, you know, floor levels like I was showing you, but we have different color codes for that you can apply to the different Shifts that you could have mean something in your environment uh, visually that, that, that helps your uh, your staff as well as um, you can actually rename the shifts. So you saw that natively my shifts were just called the time, the start and the end time, right? We can actually change that to be, you know, cubicle one, cubicle two, or, you know, a particular area of a floor or a very specific desk if you wanted to, um, you know, that that's all available to you. Those are basically text fields that you can customize. So we're seeing, um, you know, people basically walking the floors of their various um, locations to determine, you know, what they think is safe and what level of, of uh, you know, what scope they want to, to, dictate this stuff down at and then um, transferring that into something like shifts can can do. And if you're looking for a, a more robust, more purpose built solution, we have a Pawan solution for you. Well, that's, that's great. Um, we got another question in here just around Pawan solution. Um, you talked about the no code and the, you know, you could customize this. Um, and what type of uh, uh, army or what? How many people do we need to um, actually put this solution together? Do I need, you know, can I do this with one or two people, or do I actually need a whole team of developers and to, to kind of create a solution like this or deploy this? Yeah. So um, I think if I were to answer that as a general question, um, for the Power Platform, the Power Platform is a citizen developer platform. It can be extended using the pro developers as well, but typically you would find one to two developers building solutions like these for your groups, for your organizations. Um, do we need more than that? I think it depends on the type of solution you're crafting. So as an example, the, the solution we demonstrated for you was built by a couple of developers over uh, two to three weeks, but that's also because we were working very iteratively with uh, quite a few of you, um, actually quite a few of our customers, gathering those requirements, taking that feedback, and iteratively breaking those features in. So if you've got an idea of what you want to build, um, it's easy enough to do with one or two developers. That's that's great. Um, Powan, we have another question around, you know, what if uh, I need to connect this app to my current badging system or what if we have our own clock and tools, but want to leverage the, you know, power uh, BI dashboards? Um, you know, how do we do that? Is that possible? 
Yeah, and again, this is a question that's come up a few times actually over the last two weeks since I started sharing the solution out. Uh, a lot of companies out there would love to tie this system back to their badging system. And so, as I said earlier, this is our low code platform. All you need to do is wire up a connector to your badging system. Hopefully there is a connector for it. If not, there is an API for it. Um, you can easily call an external API using the Power Automate or the flow that's running behind the scenes. And so you can uh, send information to your badging system on activating or deactivating a badge for an individual for a specific date range or duration. Um, easy enough to do, except it does require your badging system obviously to have some kind of an API that can be tapped. Um, with respect to um, essentially, sorry, uh, Edward, what was the second question you had? Oh, it, uh, being able to basically tie it into. Um, ah, the clock in, yeah, clock in yeah. system, that's right. right. Um, that's right. So everything goes back to again your existing system. So we had a customer actually just yesterday uh, come up with an approach where they said, hey, we don't really want real time starts, but we do want historical reporting so we can use it for our planning purposes. And what we are going to do is do uh, uh, and daily extract of the information from our clock in clock out system. Now the system that we build, the building reservation system or the building access system, leverages SharePoint list behind the scenes of the data source. So what they're going to do is do a daily extract and load it in the SharePoint list that we've created. That way the dashboards that we have, the Power BI dashboard that I was sharing, would be able to tap into their clock in clock out information, provide the same level of trending, contact tra tracking, and additional uh, planning uh, insights they need to get out of these reports from that information. Great, thank you, Powin. And you know, I just want to take this opportunity to to thank all our speakers, Powin, Kensington, and Marissa, uh, for spending some time here with us on FSI Fridays. You know, we learned a lot about how we could leverage the power of shifts, um, as well as you know the capabilities in the apps uh, to return to the office. Um, if you have any feedback on this session or have ideas for future sessions or need to request a follow up on this topic, uh, feel free to reach out via the, the short link there, aka.ms forward slash FSI Fridays feedback. And you'll find these videos as well as past recordings of FSI Fridays um, on our YouTube channel. Uh, feel free to subscribe so that once those videos are up, you'll have quick access to them um, to then share this amongst your team as well. Um, so uh, with myself and Edwin, we'd like to thank you again, thank our speakers, and we'll see you at the next episode um, of FSI Fridays. Yes, thanks everyone. Have a wonderful weekend. Um, and this is our July schedule coming up, so stay tuned. Thanks again.